All right, good afternoon. So I'm sure last time you remember making our leopards, and we made it by making a head, a circle, then making a little muzzle, putting all the eyes, the nose, the mouth in there, the body, and then of course adding all these little textures and details here to make it look a lot more like a leopard. Now today, I'm just going to show you very quickly, I'm going to try not to waste too much time, but what happens if you want to draw a leopard in another direction? That one is looking straight at us. What if I want to draw one looking to the side, or, or looking to, uh, I guess, a three-quarters view, where it's looking kind of off away from us? Now, I'm going to show you really quickly how to do that, and I don't want to spend too much time, because we still have to work on a painting. So right here, I'm going to draw the circle head. The circle head does not change. In fact, that's going to be the same no matter what direction you want your head to go. It's always going to have that little circle part. Now, if I'm going to draw the muzzle going off down, well, then I already know it's coming down if it's looking straight at me. If it's looking off to the side, I'm not just going to move this thing over. That's not correct. The muzzle has to move this way. So if the head is going to be moving that way, the muzzle is actually coming, going to be coming out to the side like so, which is no longer a curve anymore because now I have to show that the nose is still straight. See, that is still going to be a straight line coming across, so that muzzle is going to come off to the side. Now, everything else about here, my eyes, everything, is just going to shift over to the side. So my nose over here is still going to be like a little kitty cat triangle. I'm still going to have that little kitty cat mouth like I always do. But now that it's to the, but because it's a leopard, it's going to be a lot bigger and a lot bigger. The chin still stays the same. My eyes are over here to the side, but the eyes are still pointing more or less towards the nose. That doesn't change. It's still going to go more or less coming this way towards the nose. Then after that, I'm going to make my ears. One ear right here, kind of a roundish triangle. The other ear way over here, kind of a roundish triangle. My little hairs. There you go. And then, of course, down here, get that jawline going. And voila. Now from this point on, I'm sure you can finish the rest of this leopard by putting the spots, the details, all this other stuff. And that's fine. I'm not going to waste a lot of time by doing all those details when we got so much information to go to. Now over here, if I want to draw a leopard off to the side, here's my head. Now the muzzle doesn't come up at the top of the head. It's going to come down just a little bit. So it's going to come way over here, and then it's going to come down here towards the jawline. So a little different there. You're also going to notice the eye is going to be a little different because the eye is coming off this way. So it still points over here, and I'm going to see the eye looking over this way. Kind of like a little mouth that's open this way, but I'm going to draw a little eye there. Now the nose is harder to see because I can only see a little bit of it. The mouth is harder to see because I can only see a little bit of it. And then there's that nice little chin over here. And then after that, the ear is much easier because you only have to draw really just one. And I can only see some of it, and then the other one's going to be way the heck over here. And then I'm going to have some little chin lines, and then the neck coming out this way. Now again, the only thing I have to worry about now are all my little details, my spots and whatnot. But that's pretty much it. You can even make the mouth open by dropping the jawline a little bit more. Now, the best advice I'm going to give you is don't just necessarily use these to help you draw your, person, your leopard to the side. Actually look at a picture for a real leopard. That's going to help you a lot more. Now, for the sake of argument, let's go ahead and get rid of all this, and let's get this big paper. This is really where I want to go. We want to go with these paintings today. Now, for here, I'm going to decide where I want my leopard, whether I want paper like this or like this, and how I want to draw them. Now, I'm going to make this super simple. So I'm just going to draw my simple circle, and I'm going to draw the muzzle dropping straight down over here. So just like we started. Then I'm going to go ahead and put my nose over here, make it a little more like a heart, Drop that mouth over there. Uh huh. Then over here, I'll go ahead and make my little eyes coming down. Again, looking towards the mouth. Or, I'm sorry, going down towards the nose. I misspeak sometimes. So that nose is coming back towards the eyes. Then, of course, there's the cheeks coming up. Then I make my little ears out here. There we go. And then after that, I can, of course, I'm going to put my little dots and put my little details. But I think one thing I'm going to do that's a little different is I'm actually going to try to make the mouth open. So to do that, all I have to do is just open the mouth up. There are some little teeth. Here's some more little teeth. And I'm not going to draw this down here. I'm going to let the mouth open. It's just going to drop down a little further. Maybe put some other little teeth down here. Maybe put a nice little tongue down here. And the chin 
still exists. I'm still going to have to draw the bottom of that chin. I'm just dropping the mouth a little bit. So there, there, there. And then, of course, the big old neck that he's going to have to have. So let's give him a big old neck dropping down over here. Big old body. And I think I am going to draw a piece of the body coming out this way. There. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about the other details right now. I'll get all the little spots in here later. Like I said, I'm trying really hard not to waste your time. I'll finish all these little details later. We know how to do that. That shouldn't be a problem. Now, we're not going to start by painting our leopard. We're going to start by painting the biggest thing on the paper, which is actually not the leopard. It's the background. And we're going to draw that as a tint. Now, what's a tint? A tint is when you make color lighter by mixing it with White. That's right. White will make any color lighter, even black. So what I want to do is I want to start with white. Now I've got this big old bottle of paint. So all I have to do is just pour it on here. You don't have to pour it. If you've got a little jar at home, just grab a brush and you're going to start by painting the background white. Now you might be asking, why in the world am I painting white paper white? Well, the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm trying to spread this paint out and because I'm getting ready to mix this white with another color. So there I've got white all over the place. Now I have to pick a color for my background. Uh, the most common, of course, is blue, but it really doesn't matter what color you use. I don't care if it's purple, pink, whatever you'd like. I'm just going to pour a little bit of blue. Now I'm not going to use that much. The more color I use, the darker it's going to be. The less color I use, the lighter it's going to be. So now that I put just a little bit of blue, I'm going to get a little water to help it mix a little bit. And now I'm going to start mixing my blue. And you can see how much it changes. That white really lightens up that blue quite a bit. See that? And so I'm just getting it all over the place, getting it all over the place. If you made any mistakes here, you think your head was too big, or you made a mistake with the sides or the neck or whatever, well, this is a good chance for you to fix it. Just come in here and clean it up, make it a little smaller. This is the part where you want to be going a little bit more carefully and getting in here. Now, if you make a mistake and you accidentally get inside here, that's okay. And that's why we're painting the sky first. Because if you make any mistakes, when we paint our leopard, then we can fix it. Now, the problem here is my sky is all mixed, but it's not very smooth. This is a very bad texture right here. It's a very scratchy texture. And if I'm trying to do sky, I don't want it to be scratchy. I want it to be as smooth as possible. So how do you make it smooth? Well, you'll notice that I have all these lines here. Anytime I move my brush, I'm leaving brush strokes. Those are lines that are being left behind because of the direction my brush is going. It's pushing all this paint around. If I want to make this smooth, then I want those brush strokes to be going in the same direction, and I want them to be as smooth as possible. I'm going to get a little water here, and I'm going to start moving my brush side to side. And you can already see what's happening here. Because all the lines are going in the same direction, now it looks a lot more mixed, and it looks a lot more cohesive, like they're all doing the same job. And there we go. Now, I know I told you to use water, and I do want you to use water, but please don't let your paint get watery. Water has one big purpose, and that is to help the to paint to stretch a little bit. Sometimes when you're painting, temper paints tend to dry out. If you feel your brush getting sticky, that means it's drying. So a little bit of water will help to keep the paints nice and smooth and stretched out. And so there is my sky and it is nice and done. Now if you want to add things like sun, clouds, any of that stuff, don't do it now. We'll do that when this paint is dry. All I want us to do is get our leopard down on paper, paint our background, and we are done.